Hi, uh, I wanted to show you how this UI is made. Uh, first, the most important thing is how I set up a texture atlas in Blender, in the way that I can just render out the whole UI and change it in one click. Um, for that, I set up a 2K texture with an orthographic camera that fits the scene and resolution, and then I started to add objects on the fly when needed. That means that right now there is plenty of empty space that, once everything is done in the future, must be rearranged and resized in order to take advantage of the whole texture. Design-wise, I tend to start every design with a couple domain materials and some case shapes. In this case, following the aesthetics idea, I chose concrete and some form of rusty metal along some industrial shapes with big nails, clamps and such. And then I decided to make the button hover effects with a K-color light, although I'm not so happy with it right now. The goal here is, instead of having a texture for every single element, is to assign regions to this texture atlas in Godot, then offsetting them by code when you need variations like hovers or pressed states. As a 3D artist and a sole developer project this is, that allows me to quickly make all the stuff needed with the same materials and tones and then quickly iterate on everything instead of painting all the elements by hand. We are aiming for productivity, so if I want to make everything darker, for example, the last thing I want is to open dozens of textures and tweak them one by one, exporting them, check if they look the same, etc. So now we just work and press the render button and then everything gets updated on the engine. Regarding materials, I purchased a while ago a Blender add-on called Extreme PBR. I think it was 80 euro or something like that, but it saved me a lot of time at work, so it has been worth every buck for me. There are other options, of course, uh, even for free, but I absolutely recommend to have these sort of libraries, just for sketching or quick render simple scenes. We are aiming for productivity, so a specific object texturing like painting in substance is a no-go here. Got those materials and changed them a little bit, making them auto-mapped and then added a prop to control the UV tiling per object. Then this is important. I added kind of a shadow catcher to get the ambient occlusion and shadows of those objects in the background. This works with a shader to RGB node as a factor mix between black and transparent and depends directly on the environment setup. So it's a bit difficult to control, but once made, even if the effect looks subtle, it definitely makes a difference and makes an impact on the whole scene. Also, along some other post-processing effects, film should be set to transparent in order for it to work and not render the environment texture as a background. Finally, I'm using an add-on called BF Autosave Render in order to save and override the old file automatically. Now that we have the atlas texture rendered with the alpha channel, it's a matter of assigning regions as needed. I mixed a lot of custom elements with shaders with other elements on the theme editor. But must say that, although it's powerful, I'm not a big fan of this theme editor for this kind of UI, as you have to open it each time you make a change on a style box, for example, and then you are quite tied to very specific stuff that prevents versatility. So I have some elements ruled by this and made others by custom textures and functionality, like the Tabs UI, so let's say this works but it's not fully consistent. This panel, for example, 
it's just a style box with the region assigned, so you can scale it like a nine patch, and it has a background with a shader that allows me to avoid tiling by using fragment coordinates, then tweak colors and add dirt and stuff. Now, I can just set up some UI panel by adding other elements like this inset, and for example, a custom separator with different variations made by offsetting those region coordinates, you can see. And of course, buttons. In this case, I'm holding a custom button class that I pretend to use for almost everything that is interactive. So they are generated on tool script and have some signals attached like calling to what I call master methods or any functionality that I'll need from them. We set the button type by checking if it's a small button, a medium, large one, tap button, close button, a more or less one, whatever. And assign an atlas texture resource and offsetting them on duplicates to avoid making more atlas textures by hand. I had to add some custom functionality and sort of a state machine as the focus system on buttons combined with this not that flexible dim editor it's quite a pain in the neck, like if you press a button and then you press another, the former one gets focused with the press texture and stuff like that and I hated it. Let me show you an example on how I would set up a panel with some config settings and player stats. I made a class that holds these two type of what I call value setters and getters and that are generated in base of some data case automatically. For example, a value getter would reflect the current value and then read if there's another key like available points in order to show the more or less buttons. A progress bar like experience or any skill progression would check if the retreat value is a dictionary, which means it contains a level, a current value, and a max value for the next one. Then instantiates a custom progress bar and sets it up with those values. A drop-down menu is just a value setter that would generate itself reading the values from the options key and then setting the current one. A checkbox would just set up on true or false, a spin box with just an integer, and a slider should read from 0 to a given max value. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff I could cover like the custom tooltip, cursors, icons, prompts, item slots, but I think this video is dense enough and it's getting tedious. So I would jump in the next one to a different topic and I'm gonna showcase and break down step by step how I made this orb shader. So see you in the next one. Cheers!